Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar today, and we're here with Davey Mooney. I'm glad to see you, Davey. Man, glad to see you too, Bob. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you. So tell people who you are. Uh, my name's Davey Mooney. I uh, run the guitar program over here at the University of North Texas. Uh, I record for Sunnyside Records. Uh, what else do I do? I've been writing these Mel Bay books. <laughs> uh, Benedetto Artist. Um, so let me stop yeah, you right there. Father. D Davey, D Davey is, is a genuine badass of jazz guitar. Oh, uh, that, there's no, no question about it. And you also, you gig, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah, uh, I, I, I caught you up in New York. You know, it's, it's a small, it's smalls. Is that what you were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. where, where, you, where you were playing much to our delight and, and, and thrill that you contribute a whole bunch of content to jazz guitar today. And we really, we really appreciate that. You got some, you got some cool, exciting new stuff going on. So yeah. you want to talk about that a little bit? What, what, tell us, tell us what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been a busy summer. I've been trying to uh, recreate, you know, my life a little bit pre pandemic, you know, when I used to travel a lot uh, internationally, I would always go to Brazil, Mexico, and Japan. Those were the three for, uh, you know, various reasons for my international trips and, you know, going back to New York and stuff. And it's been, you know, the, the pandemic messed all that up. So I uh, was in Brazil over the, only a couple of weeks ago, I was doing a new uh, CD for Sunnyside down there. Actually, a month before that, I'd been in, I was in Jalapa, Mexico for, uh, for a month. And yeah, I did the record in Brazil, and at the same time, um, I've got this new book from uh, Mel Bay. It's called Into the Labyrinth, An Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar. And yeah, I've been just doing a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire. Um, you know, for me, it's always a combination of teaching and playing. To be perfectly candid, the reason we're talking today is we want to talk about your book. Okay. Yeah, so let's it talk is. about your book. Um, What's what's this? What's give us the overview of the book, and then we'll talk about some specifics. Yeah, sure. So, like I said, here it is: "Into the Labyrinth: Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar," and it came about because uh, I have this other book, "Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary," and that's like a improv book. It's a guitar book, but it's more of a jazz improvisation book, and it's really focused on uh, incorporating actual jazz vocabulary into your improvising. Um, and so I was working with that book for a while, and I realized that I hadn't said much about the actual mechanics of the guitar, the instrument, right. you know. Um, so I wanted to do something that went through, you know, my journey. I, I hesitate to use the word master the, the fretboard, but, you know, become fluent where all the notes are, things like that. And because, you know, obviously that's very important. And the guitar neck, I think a labyrinth is a apt metaphor because <laughs> get lost in there pretty pretty quickly yes you can i i've done it many times mm -hmm. and uh you know basically i i started to think about what i actually did the journey you know i've been playing guitar since i was like nine years old i'm I just turned 42 i've been playing jazz since i was about 14 so there's been a long a long road and i sort of you know went, took a trip down memory lane. And the first chapter of the book is really, I talk about that, how I went to, uh, I remember very specifically what uh, really opened up the, you know, like most guitar players, I knew some like power chords and could play some songs and I could play, you know, the minor pentatonic scale. I could play a little bit of the Stairway to Heaven solo, you know, the, the sort of basic rock guitar, classic rock. I was into Nirvana and stuff because it was the nineties, but I would, I would go to summer jazz camps in New Orleans. And I remember in the summer of 1993 or 92, one of those, I was at a jazz camp and I was in like one of those combos uh, doing like modal tunes, you know, so what, and things like that. And we had a guitar master class, And I remember a great guitar player down there named John Eubanks, who uh, still, I think he's still in New Orleans. I haven't seen him in a while, but he gave me this piece of paper that had uh, what I later realized was the caged system, like the caged shapes uh, of the major scales on the neck. And he was like, learn this. And, and it's funny because, you know, it's obviously we're in the Internet age. But back then, you know, I tell students that when someone gave you a piece of paper like that was it, like that was the information. This whole thing, that cage system, I didn't even know 
that that was the name for it until fairly recently. But those are the shapes that you learn. Um, and, and I remember I actually went home that night. It was probably like Wednesday or something of a, of a five day jazz camp. And I, I memorized them. And I remember so I'm going to, I'm going to stop you right there. Sure. And this is going to be a wonderful thing for, for people that have no idea what the heck you're talking about when you say caged. And mm -hmm. when a lot of people take it for granted that, Oh, everybody knows what the cage system is. Mm -hmm. So I want you to simplify it and explain it to me. Like I'm a six-year-old. What yeah, the is the, what is the caged system? Um, you know, it's funny, Bob, because I know that there's a, something to do with chord shapes, but to me, basically what it meant was that there are five, uh, shapes that you could use to play the major scale on the neck of the guitar and it covers the whole neck okay um, so I, can, I can demonstrate them. let's 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 do that yeah sure so you know i have a seventh string so you kind of have to ignore back when i learned this i didn't have the seventh string so right. the way i thought about it is like okay if i'm trying to learn c major right and at this camp i was playing so what which is d dorian so c major was very helpful so i would actually start down on the idea was to have all the notes diatonic to c major in various like chunks of the neck. So down here, here's the root, but I'm gonna be improvising so I don't have to start on the root. I can start down here, the lowest note, and, the, and there's a, a finger pattern. So basically like, I'm starting on G here, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, and then I shift it up, one, three, four, one, three. And that gives me all the notes of C major in that chunk of the neck. Playing so what or something. So that's and and that's where we get the C in the word caged. Oh yeah, that's, okay. And that's where we get the that's because it's off of the C. You know, I, I do I do know what it is about, but I don't I don't want to. I'm not the teacher here. No, I mean, like I said, it, it's funny how uh, information back in the day came to me. It was always to me like here are these five shapes, learn right. these five shapes, and the fretboard will be. Um, clear to you and I was like oh wow so, so in your book one, let's let's talk about the book now in the book is there a chapter that talks about that first that first position c scale I mean is that one of the how is it how is how is the book yeah. dissected open yeah, the book sure. open the book for us uh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do Davy Mooney presents well you know it's there's a narrative where I talk about how my journey with this and so here's you know the shapes basically the sheet of paper I had had you know, I've got the neck diagram and I've got the five shapes and I, uh, the root notes are in uh, like the white. So, you know, where the roots are, but, you know, like I said, because it's uh that helps, you know, you know, where you are on the neck, but it's not that you have to start on the root and end on the root. And then uh, this is, you know, the first chapter of the book, it kind of just explains what through in that, that narrative. So basically I learned, the five I'm like here's here's another one so if i have c right here mm -hmm. i mean i guess I, the lowest note in that position would be the a so i'm going one and, I, and i'm saying the finger numbers because the way i memorized it that night all those I, years finger ago, numbers finger numbers are great yeah because if you if you do it by just the way it looks mm -hmm. on the neck you know you're gonna when you have to change keys it, you're gonna get confused so i always did it by finger and so i did one three four twice That's what right I said to myself to memorize it one three and then i would shift back and do one two four i know some people go they stretch there there's right. variations on the on the thing so i would shift back and do one two four then back up one two four one three four and you can already see if you start with this one you can connect them together it's a pretty significant chunk of the neck right there like d dorian or something and we're still we're still there's no sharps or flats at this point we're still yeah. dealing with with the basically the c scale yeah, although also in the book, I remember it was, it was very important for me. Uh, I talk about how when I was first learning this, that like, for instance, if I play C here and I'm playing a jazz tune, and what if, for instance, the tune modulates to A major? I can use that same shape I just did right here. That's that shape of C in the same area of the neck. I can switch to A major and I could go back and forth. Yeah, those, those five shapes and you're in the book and they're all over the internet, but the idea was very important for me to be able to know, memorize them by the fingering and not just the way they the way it looks. So that if I'm right. playing a jazz tune in a certain area of the neck that's going to modulate, like I can play G right here using one of the cage shapes. I can play E flat right here using one of them. I can 
play A like I was just saying. I could play F. And I, and I remember too that, you know, like I said, it was on this sheet of paper that it had been lost to the, uh, you know, to the years or whatever, the sands of time. But I think some of the shapes that I did aren't exactly part of the cage system. Like for instance, I would play this for like for F major down there, this pattern of one, twice and i think somebody that was from some other system that someone had showed me so i managed to put it together though i did have the five area the five uh major scale shapes that really helped me so then I, the next day when i went back to jazz camp and played so what i could play it on the whole neck of the guitar i wasn't stuck in like the minor pentatonic uh, shape that i that i knew and you know with some guesswork and hopefully i would hit the right note you know so many players that are trying to that are going from, you know, the, I got the wrong guitar to do this on, you know. You know, if you're playing, you know, the pentatonic thing, uh -huh. you know, that's a shape. It is. I, I guarantee you that 80 to 90% of the guitar players out there, at least they used to be, have no idea what those notes are. Yeah. But they know that shape works. And if I want to play in G, I'll just move it down two frets, you know, and do, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. But they might not know that that's a that's a B flat, and they might not know that a B flat's not in the G scale, even though we're playing supposedly in G. And they might not even know the reason why. They just know it freaking sounds cool, you know. Yeah, and it does. So so yeah, it does. It absolutely does. And and there's reasons for that, and you know we all know intellectually why, but that's not important here. So so the idea of learning a physical shape and what that sounds like. Mm -hmm. And attaching that to your creative experience, i.e. making music, is not anything new, but it might be new for people who are trying to go from blues, rock, you know, funk and all of that into jazz to learn some shapes and yeah. learn how they apply. And that's that's what the book is all about, is those shapes. Well, that, yeah, that's that's sort of the introduction, Bob. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of content. That's sort of in the first chapter. I talk about kind of three, it was like a three legs to the stool that helped me put me on my way. And one was those shapes, because then, like I said, if I could play a tune, a modal tune on the whole neck of the guitar, I wasn't confined mm -hmm. to the little spot where I knew it. But you know, I guess the the disadvantage of the cage system is that you know you could find yourself kind of stuck in one place, and then you got to shift up as opposed to, you know, say most modern jazz players and guitar players in general, I think play more sort of diagonally on the neck. You know, you don't want to be stuck in one spot. I remember my teacher, Hank Mackey in New Orleans, he also showed me these ascending arpeggio shapes that kind of mm -hmm. go this way on the neck. And I remember working them out to where I could connect those uh, caged uh, scale shapes. So if, like, for instance, if I wanted to play the diatonic seven chords of, of C major, not to get too technical in the term, but basically just arpeggiate the chords of the C major scale, like C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B minor seven, flat five, and do it this way. Like the lowest one on the top three strings would be B mm. minor seven, flat five, this shape. Then right. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G seven, A minor, and then you're back to B minor seven, flat five. And so, and I could do that on various string sets, like down here. I'm actually starting with F major seven. Again, it's just all the ones in the key of C major. So then when I was connecting those scale shapes, that's kind of how I go this way. And so I knew this and I knew that and I think that's how I, I, I'm able to shift and play, like I said, diagonally across the neck and not feel like I'm stuck. And so those were two very important, uh, like I said, like uh, legs of the stool in, in terms of learning the neck and also learning how to how to improvise tunes. And you know, like I said, they're very specific. I don't. Uh, there's so many ways to do it. Of course, this is what I, the ones that I learned. So, like for instance, uh, the fingering for the major seven one is like second finger, third finger, first finger, fourth finger. And then you can do, you know, you can do that. Right. You can get a legato note. Uh, and you know, again, that's all C major. So if the band's playing a D minor, that's D Dorian. Then you can go down your 
arcade shape. And you get a more, uh, you know, linear, but also kind of vertical uh, component to your improvising. So those two things were really important for me. And I, I talk about those in the first chapter. And also the idea that if it's a C major, you know, you're playing a C major seven, but if the band, if the bass player plays an A, you're playing an A minor nine. You play a D minor seven and the band plays a, a B flat, you're playing a B flat major seven. And I had a chart that uh, Hank wrote for me, just learning how to spell chords from, uh, you know, know what a C major seven is from the third. You start on the third of a C major seven arpeggio, you have an E minor seven. And if you start on the third of a E minor seven, you have a G major seven and things like that. And I, I memorized that so that I knew, you know, from an intellectual uh, standpoint, what chords were, especially from the third. I think that's really important. You know, you learn one thing and you've actually, you learn one thing in your fingers and you've actually learned a lot of things. You can get your brain to, you know. Let me stop you there. I want, to, I want to make a quote there. If you learn, say it again, if you learn one thing with your fingers. Yeah, you've, you've actually, actually learned, learned a lot of many, things. many things. Okay, uh, we're going to we're going to put a pin on that right okay. there. We're going to put a pin on that right there. We're going to call that the end of chapter one in the introduction to your new book, which is Into the Labyrinth. Yeah. So um, this is Bob Baker for Davey Mooney. Davey, don't go anywhere because we're going to pick right back up with section two, okay?